for Carl, the people he worked with was family because he had, did not have the concept of work. Mm. For him, it was the concept of life. Okay. And as such, it was never colleagues. It was part of a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really kind of went into all aspects. Like as example, we have, uh, we had always this year end party where uh, we gathered everybody together, which was extremely important to him because right. he loved the smiling faces. And I remember once I picked him up from um, the, the, uh, the airport to get him to the venue where we were. And he was about an hour late, so everybody was waiting for him. And um, so I wanted to usher him into the, the, the main dining room. And he said to me, no, 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 don't do that. Get me to the kitchen. I said, what do you want to do in the okay. kitchen? He said, like, I'm an hour late. Can you imagine what stress level that puts into for the kitchen, for all the kitchen stuff to keep the, the food ready for another hour? I want to apologize and want to thank them. So wow. he took the effort, went to the kitchen, greeted everybody and excused uh, himself. That, that, that is who Carl was. Wow. All right, all right. Welcome to a whole new episode of Tell Me Why, which is a Gulf News original podcast. Today's episode is extra special. It's something that we have never done before. We're outside of the studio. We're breaking free. We're exploring different realms, and we are actually addressing new topics. Today, we're talking fashion. We're talking construction. We're talking real estate. We're going to talk a bit about everything and how these two worlds are coming together. Joining me is Pierre Paolo, who is the CEO of Karl Lagerfeld. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. How's everything? How is your, uh, your stay in Dubai so far? I know you arrived in unexpected conditions. <laughs> I, I did arrive in unexpected conditions. Uh, we're encircling uh, over Dubai airport and being told it's because of rain. Oh. Uh, that was uh, pretty surprising. Actually, it reminded me my very first one and one uh, session with Carl about uh, 15 years ago when he invited me to his private home in uh, Paris and I was um, running through Paris uh, and it was raining and I was pouring soaking wet when I came into uh, his house and then when he was receiving me I was wearing white pants to mm -hmm. totally soaking wet and uh, he basically told me I could have told you white pens in the city that calls for rain. Wow, so. okay, that's really good <laughs> advice. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind next time I go to Paris. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you mentioned that you know you, you met Carl years ago. I want you to tell us about your journey. So how did you meet him? How did your journey with the brand begin? Yeah, well, the, the fun thing was actually that I was not coming from within the fashion industry. I worked for 20 okay. years in, in sports. I worked for, for, for Nike for more than uh, 10 years. And then I've been asked whether I would like to become uh, part of a, of a different venture, namely uh, the Karl Lagerfeld uh, Fashion House. So I did not really expect, uh, know what to expect. And um, so I, I, I knew I liked the idea, but I did not know Carl personally, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that uh, specific moment that I was uh, telling you before about that rain moment when he invited me to his house was a life-defining moment for me. Mm. Why? Because he invited me uh, to his place. Uh, we had lunch together and uh, it was about a two hours lunch where he was talking about people, mm -hmm. places to go, literature history he was moving all these aspects of his life together to a biggest bigger canvas in a very very inspiring way and then mm -hmm. he asked me um can i show you my home and oh. yeah well then you wonder oh wow of course you can show me your home of course uh, yeah <laughs> and that was um very life defining why because he took me for more than an hour through each individual part of his place, mm. even through the living room, the bathroom. He explained me why he used which scents, why the colors of the walls were uh, as they were. And he gave to it all a meaning in a very effortless way, mm. which was basically a mirror of his life and his personality. Right. And with this, an invitation for me to become part of this life. 
And wow. uh, that was life defining for me. First, I thought, oh, I embark a new business. Mm -hmm. But what I basically did is I embarked a new life and a new venture. That was my starting point. And uh, ever since I have been on that venture and they yeah, are proudly taking his legacy into the future now. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful because the person you're describing is someone that finds art in the littlest details. I mean, what you're describing is that he even, he spoke about the beauty of the materials he used in what room. I mean, that's a true artist. You know that he's not just one that just makes decisions haphazardly. There is a meaning behind everything he does. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, it very much stems from a genuine uh, curiosity that Carl mm -hmm. had. So yes. he never thought, oh, I know it all. And I tell you, uh, that mm -hmm. was never what he had in his mind. He always thought there is so much more to understand and to find out. And then maybe there's a way to apply it in a different way in what I'm doing. So his right. curiosity was really about people very much. Uh, he very much uh, took a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. by being with other people uh, across countries, uh, across different uh, areas, so not fashion people, mm. really kind of yes. uh, beyond, be it artists, be it intellectual people, yes. be it people that had a, a, a broad history. There was huge curiosity, and I think he was building everything uh, on this curiosity for life and right. for people. Right. I mean, it's no lie that this isn't the first time I hear that, you know, Carl was very involved with people. I mean, yeah, just speaking with Caroline right before we started recording, she, she mentioned how he truly believed in having a workforce that serves as a family. I mean, the people come together. It's not about just people doing different roles. No, they all come together in one body, in, in unison, to get the job done. But it doesn't so much feel like a job, it just fe feels like a huge family. Like a huge family, absolutely. And I feel like that's a huge part of his legacy. Absolutely. For him, for Carl, the people he worked with was family because mm. he had, did not have the concept of work. Mm. For him, it was the concept of life. Right. And as such, it was never colleagues. It was part of a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really kind of went into all aspects like as example we have uh we had always this year-end party where uh we gathered everybody together which was extremely important to him because right. he loved the smiling faces and i remember once i picked him up from um the the uh, the airport to get him to the venue where we were and he was about an hour late so everybody was waiting <laughs> for him and um so i wanted to usher him into the the, the main dining room and he said to me no, 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 don't do that. Get me to the kitchen. I said, what do you want to do in the okay. kitchen? I said, like, I'm an hour late. Can you imagine what stress level that puts into for the kitchen, for all the kitchen stuff to keep the, the food ready for another hour? I want to apologize. I want to thank them. So wow. he took the effort, went to the kitchen, greeted everybody and excused uh, himself. That, that, that is who Carl was. Wow, that's unbelievable. Just the humility and, and the fact that he... I mean, he was an iconic figure, and we cannot deny that. And just feeling like, you know what, we're all humans at the end of the day, and these people have put in the effort, and he wanted to show that appreciation. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I don't think we would know that unless we heard it from people from within. Yeah, no, was, no, no. no abs uh, yeah, I think you're right, because also Carl did not have a huge, um, how can I say, interest mm. to show uh, his personality uh, to a broad audience because I think he has been so warm and also vulnerable mm. that um, for too many people he appeared very cold. Uh, you okay. know the way how he portrayed himself. You know um, the the shades were, uh, that covered his face, his face, his exactly. uh, stale appearance. Yes. Um, so I think he also liked to shield himself right. from too much. Emotion, right? And um, he was a very, very warm-hearted, very um, uh, empathetic person. And at the same time, he had to protect himself a bit. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You mentioned earlier that it was everything for Carl meant more. It meant life rather than just a task. Um, tell me how his legacy continues after his departure. Yeah. So the great thing is that we have been uh, able and blessed, having been 
not only working with Carl for many years, but actually being part of that uh, spirit, that culture, mm -hmm. that soul, and that way of, of working. And this is how we have built a very own culture of, of his house mm. to ide ideate, to create, to, to develop. So basically, in 2019, when Carl passed away, it was a moment where everything could have gone wrong. Right. And everything went perfectly right. Wow. And it went perfectly right because everybody understood that from that moment on, on we were the sole custodians of his legacy. Mm -hmm. The only house that carries his name at the doorbell, mm -hmm. which basically meant that all what we got and learned from him about the culture of going about doing things was something that we will and can continue into the future. And that is still uh, what, what we're doing. So everything we do, we ask ourselves, would Carl be proud of it today? Oh, that's amazing. So it's sort of like he facilitated the path for you guys. Exactly. And you just, it was your responsibility to either continue it or, you know, as you said, turn it into something that might may have uh, caused a drop in the brand. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, so if you think about as example, today we're here in Dubai, there is uh, Caroline Lebar. Mm -hmm. She is the head of uh, um, communication and image of the house. She has been working with Carl for more than 30 years. Yes. Um, she has been part of um, almost all his uh, also private projects, also architectural projects. Mm -hmm. So she has been almost like his daughter. Uh, we have here today Sebastian Jondo. He was uh, his uh, bodyguard, assistant, um, um, right hand person. Mm. Um, um, Monsieur de Confiance. His, oh, okay. Uh, his so confidant. His yeah. confidant, exactly. Mm -hmm. he, he's with us uh, today. He works with the house um, for many years as well as an Amazing. ambassador, but also in the ideation of menswear product. So it's that we we continue to work as a family business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So part of continuing the legacy is remembering Carl. And I'm aware that the Met Gala 2023 what uh, basically was in memory of Carl. It it, uh, it highlighted his achievements. It was uh, Carl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty, mm -hmm. I believe was the title. Yeah. And we saw some of A-list stars, you know, wear Carl Lagerfeld, um, you know, designer clothing or or, or uh, pieces, let's say, artistic pieces. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? How did that feel, that moment when he was highlighted at such a major yeah. fashion event? Yeah, of course, it was a, a very emotionally impactful moment for us as a house, but for all of us and also for, for me personally, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you become more or less the host. Mm. Because um, if you take the different houses, Chanel, Fendi, that Carl was associated uh, with and, 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 and worked for, they do not carry his name. At the end, the only house that carries his name is the Karl Lagerfeld house. So yeah. it has been a great honor and responsibility also to co-host uh, this this event. And it was a very proud moment uh, to actually see all the lifetime achievement um, being honored in that uh, moment. At the same time, it was also a great moment for us to take it into the future. So uh, our uh, creative director that uh, Carl picked already many years ago, Hun Kim, uh, he has been reinterpreting or interpreting um, archive pieces from Carl and basically took took them into the future um, with Jared Leto, uh, Cara Delavine, uh, Elton Mason, and many other people, uh, Carla Bruni, um, that that uh, that we basically um, kind of uh, yeah uh, gave gave the gowns and then and the attires for 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 the day. So it was. In Carl's best sense of embracing the present and inventing the future, we took these archive pieces and took it uh, to the future. It was a very, pr very proud moment for us. Phenomenal, phenomenal. You know, you mentioned the future. Can you tell us a bit more about that? What does the future hold for the brand? Well, the future holds many more moments of curiosity. So if we venture, as example, into the area of residential or hospitality, it's not an area that we necessarily, as a house, have looked at like five or 10 years ago, but Carl has been always 
uh, interested in architecture. So we are actually also taking this into the future as it has been a part of his point of interest. If mm-hmm. we look at other areas like um, uh, entertainment, um, we are uh, just right now in the development of a Hollywood movie together with Jared Leto as a yes. co-producer and uh, starring as uh, as Carl. Yes. Uh, so it's it will be the curiosity about the different uh, life areas to venture in uh, that are not necessarily only fashion, but can easily go beyond. So actually, um, we um, will, I mentioned before, Sebastian Jordo, Caroline Lebar, mm-hmm. uh, people that have been with him for many years, uh, also myself, we will be uh, executive producers of that movie mm-hmm. and basically are uh, feeding um, a good part of uh, the story content uh, mm-hmm. to the movie. So it will um, very much based on the experiences that all of us had uh, with Carl. With Carl, yeah. okay. And today we're in an event that has to do with a bit more at the side, the real estate side and the architectural side. So can you tell us a bit more what the announcement is with Taraf? Yeah, so uh, we're super excited uh, to invite uh, people to Carl's world and Carl's home, uh, 51 uh, luxury villas that we're building uh, here uh, in Dubai together with uh, Taraf. Taraf uh, for us a wonderful uh, partner. Uh, I would compare it almost like a little bit to Haute Couture. If you mm. uh, on the runway yes. of Haute Couture, <laughs> you see beautiful garments. You always praise the designer as Carl was praised for it. But Carl would be the first one to say, no, 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 it's not me. Mm. It needs the craftsmanship and the capability to translate my vision into an actual well done garment. Right. And uh, that is the seamstress is in Haute Couture. And for us, if you want so, the seamstress of it is Taraf. Taraf is uh, one that he, uh, extremely well has been able to take our vision and translate it into an actual project and also has the craftsmanship uh, to develop such high end uh, development. Uh, and therefore, it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, project for us to, yeah create Carl's future legacy. Amazing. Okay, away from the business, away from the yeah. serious talk. Is this your first visit to Dubai? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> I was Absolutely waiting for that. Not. Okay, so you've uh, been here before because I know this visit is super short. You're, you're it's leaving. It's super short. I'm actually here only for 24 hours. Wow. But if I say it's not the first time I've been many times here, it's true or not true. Why? Because every time I come here, it feels like I haven't been here before. Okay. Because in these short times that I'm not here, might mm. be half year or might be nine months or 12 months to the max, so many things change mm. that every time I come here, it feels like the very first time. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty about uh, Dubai and why Carl also loved Dubai so much because Dubai is about embracing the present and developing the future. So all yes. the time you come here, you feel a new part of the future has been developed whilst you have been away. Yes, it's it's forever evolving. Absolutely. Just like Carl's brand. Okay, um, my last question. Could, do you have any other stories you'd like to share? That you, I mean, anything, any funny stories that you had with Carl? <laughs> uh, oh, maybe one one story I, I, I can share because I, I, I liked it because I've been asked here also, it's like, okay, what is the real challenge of such a project? And mm. uh, I said, the challenge is, to make it great, but effortlessly great. And I have a, a, a story uh, with Carl uh, when he was doing this beautiful show in the Grand Palais where he had this rocket that he launched and I found it was really amazing, it was wonderful. I went behind the curtain and I congratulated him for it. And I said, it was amazing, it was a wonderful, beautiful show. And then uh, he said, it was a disaster. I said, Carl, why, why would you say it's a disaster? Okay. He said, it was so great that it has to be even greater next time. And that is wow. um, <laughs> really very much uh, what we challenge ourselves is yes. this all comes across very effortlessly, mm-hmm. very effortless, but at the same time, it has to be always great and it has always been greater the next time we do, we do it again. Mm-hmm.